Our next presenter is Professor Eileen Santiago. Um, Professor Eileen Santiago has been with Broward College since 2018. She earned her master's degree in reading at Nova Southeastern University. Prior to working at Broward College, Professor Santiago um, taught in the Broward County Public School System for six years, and she is now a reading professor at the teacher education program with a passion for service learning. Eileen is also AQ credential or certified and is a proud BC alumna. So welcome, Eileen. Hi, everyone. Good afternoon. Um, it's a pleasure to be here. I'm going to be talking about um, some of the authentic assi assignments and assessments that I have. Excuse my voice. I'm going to try to um, speak as loud as possible. Before I start, I want to share um, my experience with, a with AQ has been just an amazing resource that I've been able to use. Um, not only um, learning how to use the strategies, but teaching the strategies to my students who are pre-service teachers. And it's just so nice uh, hearing when my students graduate and then saying, you know, listening to them using these strategies in their classroom with the students. And so I'm currently in the micro uh, credentialing courses, and it's really helped me as we have transitioned to remote learning and having my students who are logging on once or twice a week with our Broward County Public School students on Teams. So, it's really benefiting me in such in, in, in a various uh, ways. And so what I'm going to be talking about is the assignments that are uh, relevant and engaging for my students. I work with students uh, who are getting the reading endorsement. They are obtaining their, ba their bachelor's degree. And so one of the learning outcomes that we have for the reading practicum is that the pre-service teachers have to work alongside a clinical supervisor for eight weeks. And they're paired with a small group of um, struggling readers who are below grade level. So that's pretty much like my capstone project. They will work on a reading portfolio that they submit at the end of the semester before they go into student teaching. So during this time, they compile in the student data, assessments, student work, and activities. Next slide, please. All right. And so what I'm gonna be sharing with you now is one of the activities that the students uh, tie into their reading portfolio. Um, I started with the story cups and then when we went remote, I gave them the opportunity to work on a one pager. Um, I was concerned that the students wouldn't be able to leave their home to get the materials or for whatever reason, I just wanted to have two different options for my students. And so one of the activities um, for the story cups, the students have to select a grade level appropriate book. We also make sure that the students are uh, being able to find culturally relevant books that they can use um, for this assignment. And what they're gonna do is they're gonna create a book report style cup or one sheet of paper. What they're going to have on this cup, and you're gonna see a video in a minute, they're going to produce a cup that has images, quotes, characters, any information that they have from the book, they're gonna put this on a cup. And this activity, um, this activity is used to assist the students who are below grade level. And so I'm going to be um, sharing a video with one of my students who uh, created the story cup. Hi, Professor Santiago. So I did my audiobook on Sadie by Courtney Summers. I loved it as an audiobook. I don't think it should be read any other way but an audiobook, just so you know. Anyways. <laughs> The grade level that I feel should be appropriate for this book is high school because it does deal with mature language and mature content like child rape. This is what my cup looks like. So I decided to do this as my interpretation of the cover of the book, which is kind of like this but not really. I decided to put Sadie in front of her face because she knows her name is Sadie but when she runs away to find her sister's killer she does go about different names. This is the podcast that Wes McCray does and it's basically about first how to find where Sadie's where Sadie is and how we can find her and also to find Maddie's color. And then this I did because Keith, the person that did rape Sadie when she was a child, 
and Phil Tomani, spoiler alert, he would take the child's um, tag from the back of their shirt and write their name on it as a souvenir. So that is why I did my cup this way. Also, inside of the cup, I have a bunch of quotes from different characters, and in red, I put it over all the quotes. And I think it's the most important quote, and it is, and Sadie, if you're out there, please let me know because I cannot take another dead girl. I really like this book because it's all up to your interpretation at the end and what you feel would happen. I like how real this book is. I like how it's a happy ending, but not in like, oh my gosh, this is totally, this would never happen in real life when it really would happen in real life. So yeah, I think that's it. Um, thank you so much for this project. I had so much fun with it and I will definitely incorporate it into my teaching when I start my teaching soon. So. Bye, for Professor Santiago. Thank you. And so that's just one of the videos. I, I want to say I had 40 videos last semester, but to hear my students say, this is the first time that I'm reading a book for fun, for leisure, not just a textbook was amazing. Um, I gave them the opportunity to either do an ebook or a regular traditional book. And so uh, this semester, we kind of promoted ebooks and it was something really interesting because most of the students hated the ebooks. And some of them said, you know what? It became an activity that I would do in the morning. This is pre COVID, uh, where I would listen to the story in the car as I take my kids to school. So it, it, it was just a really amazing um, assignment. And on the two, on, on the side, you'll see two one pagers as well and again this is just one of the activities that was part of the portfolio thank you next slide thank you and so um, this is the field experience my students uh, work with the struggling readers they uh, for 30 hours and with the reading observations we wanted to make sure that the students uh, continue to be engaged and so I allowed them to practice and um, submit videos. They could send it as an MP4 or as a YouTube where they would um, be working on a case study. And they would say, I'm gonna be presenting a lesson plan for third graders and I have four ELL students. I have two students who are ESE students, students with special needs. And so they had to break down this case study in this video and go over how would they use this book? Um, how would they in infuse the reading components? and differentiate the instruction. I also wanna talk about virtual story time. Um, I, I did this last month in the month of October. A lot of the students really miss that student interaction. So we were able to provide another opportunity for the students to bring virtual story time to the community. And these are some of the pictures. Uh, we would read a book and then the students would, um, my student teachers, uh, would work on an activity. And the student on the right side, it's a little girl, she's four years old, and she participated in our um, story times. Um, we did this in the month of October, we did two to three books a week. And um, in, this, in the spring, I'm gonna be using Mersion, which is a virtual simulation, which we're gonna be using as well for, um, for uh, reading observations. We wanna make sure to get the students to practice as much as possible before they get hired. Next slide. All right. So this is a very quick video. It's about 40 seconds that we're gonna uh, play for you guys. And it was a free book day. We did this in the month of May. Again, we wanted to make sure that our students were still being uh, able to participate in different reading activities. We mailed out about 50 books um, to, to third grade students. All the students in third grade uh, were below grade level. And we focused in the, uh, the city of Hollywood and Pompano, two of our low social economic communities. And we work with the schools to not only mail out the free books, but then have a YouTube day where we would actually have every student um, create a different activity with the book. So um, this student right here, she's a student teacher, and um, she's gonna tell you a little, bit about, uh, a little bit more about what she did with her uh, book, The BFG. The Big Friendly Giant by Roald Dahl. Oh, hey there, my friendly little giants. It's Miss Young, and today we're gonna be learning on how to make frog scottle from the BFG. Remember to do this at home with your parents. Ready? Let's go. Dreams is full of mystery and magic. 
Do not try to understand them. Roald Dahl, the BFG. Alrighty, my friendly little giants. In order to make Frobscotto, you're gonna need one cup of water, two cups of sugar, one tablespoon of cream, one teaspoon vanilla extract, green food coloring, one liter of club soda, and fresh raspberries. Okay, so I, I want to add something to the last slide. Um, that student that you saw, she just got hired today. I was called by a, a principal who called me and said to me, I want to know a little bit more about your student. It was so amazing to be able to say, not only did this student graduate with a bachelor's, but let me tell you, she participated in our Top Chef. She participated in a free book day. She actually went to the city of Hollywood and also donated food with me. And so it, it it's just super amazing to see um, just the great work that our students are doing. Um, I, I also wanted to share uh, for not everyone here is in the education uh, field, but um, with the videos, I think that there's a great way to use it in like, in the business pathway or in then also the nursing pathway when you're thinking about like a business plan or having students go over certain concepts it's a great way to have your students practice using videos and also for virtual story times i was thinking um i was talking to one of my students about doing faqs and they mentioned you know topics about public safety maybe doing a book club with the english department so please consider doing story times maybe not story times but these virtual different um opportunities that you can provide for your students Next slide, please. Okay, so um, here's the big one. These are our biggest outcomes that I combine into all my classes, specifically in, um, in, in my reading practicum. Again, when you look at the reading components, I wanna make sure that they're going over fluency, vocab, comprehension, phonemic awareness, and phonics. And struggling readers, what are we doing to assist our struggling readers? Our ELO learners, which are diverse learners, multi-century interventions there's a new bill that was passed a few years ago going over how we use auditory kinesthetic visual and, and just using different um interventions with our students and then lastly lesson development and lesson implementation the development is creating the lesson plan and i'm going back and forth with them on zoom calls revising and then the, the lesson implementation which is the actual observations so going back to dr jody uh robson that mentioned the le uh, the learning outcome of, of, of evaluate given a case study my students are able to do that they're able to go back and review the case study for the student and then create a lesson plan deliver it and infuse all these different components into a lesson plan that we've been doing uh through a video Next slide. Professor Santiago, I'm sorry to interrupt. I just want to make sure that we have time for questions and the breakout group. So I'm just going to give you a, a one minute cue. OK, thank you. And so again, our goal is to engage all learners. Uh, service learning has been a, just a great component that we've been able to add to our authentic assignments and activities. Next slide. And I do want to kind of talk about this uh, using you. you uh, Zoom and YouTube for video presentations, as well as video options for students using D12. So here's an example on the right. Um, this was another book trailer from the spring, Virtual Therabethia. Everyone was home, created a video, and were able to put it together uh, for their assignment. And last slide, my pre-service teachers, they, they come from different areas in the county. And um, some of my students just graduated high school, and some of them are coming back to school after 15 years. So it's making sure to um, bring these activities for all the students, no matter uh, their age. Next slide. Communication is key. Um, I really go back to uh, one of the AQ um, where we talk about uh, welcoming the students. Sorry, guys, mom and I are a little tense right now because I got to get her home. That's really important during remote learning. I've been able to do one of the activities with the group syllabus. Not only is it an assignment to make sure that they are reading the syllabus, but also to build that student to student relationship and being flexible, changing my office hours, making sure I'm there for the students, either on the phone or via Zoom and providing feedback and asking them how they're doing and how can I help them. And um, that's it for me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I'm sorry to have to cut you off because there was clearly a lot, a lot more to say on this topic, but we do have a question. Uh, do you apply authentic assessments structured as written or oral assessments individually, in pairs, or in groups? So it seems like there might be two questions in there. 
Okay. Um, I want to say that I mix it up. I have um, the assessments. Most of the assessments are individually just because um, when they receive their degree, I need to have a matrix that I'm checking off individually, but I do have opportunities where they do work in groups. I think it's important to keep the students engaged. Um, we all know that not everyone has a home that has someone that they can talk to. So I think that being able to have the students work in groups also helps their social emotional learning and staying engaged in the community.